What's up guys, it is Dr. Seth, and today we are gonna go through the shoulder prep work that I'm doing away from the gym to make sure that when I get in the gym, my shoulders feel good and are ready to go. For those of you who don't know, I had my left pec reattached six months ago when I was growing up racing motocross. I had three surgeries on my right shoulder, not to mention like five broken collarbones, some separations, broken shoulder blade. So my shoulders have seen some shit, but doing this work allows me to still have really productive training that is very, very, very rarely inhibited by shoulder pain. All of the work I'm gonna be showing you guys today is going to be done with the intent of number one, making sure that I have access and control over the ranges of motion necessary to power lift. Number two, making sure that I can eliminate any lingering sensitivities within those ranges of motion. And number three, they're gonna let me build up a little bit of strength and a little bit of tissue tolerance in those secret places along the way. So let's get into it. And because tomorrow is squat day, the first thing I'm gonna do is check up on my external rotation and my ability to get into the squat bar position. All I'm gonna do here is grab a pair of blast straps. You can do this with bands. You can do this in a doorway. I just love the blast straps because number one, they're hanging on my wall and they're easy to access. Number two, the freedom allows me to kind of get into different spots with the shoulder very easily. So I can kind of push into where it feels the worst because if I can make where it feels the worst feel a little bit better, that is gonna be the most beneficial for me. I'm basically just doing like a push up out of the bottom of where I'm gonna be holding the squat bar. It's kind of gonna be like the reverse of a face pull. Dawson Windham has things that he calls McLeod fly that he does with dumbbells for this motion. This is just easier to set up down here because I am kind of lazy and I like easy to set up things. Other key points here that I'm thinking about, other than just kind of getting into that squat bar position, getting into the external rotation, getting everything packed back, is I'm gonna keep my abs on so my rib cage isn't flaring, and I'm not just like cheating away from shoulder range by dumping rib cage up. Because shoulder range of motion isn't just where your arm is in space, it's where your arm is in relation to the shoulder socket, it's where your shoulder blade is in relation to the rib cage, and it's where your rib cage is in relation to the midline. So for making sure that our rib cage is locked down, our abs are on, we are putting most of the demand on our shoulder socket, which is where we want it to be here. And as you can see, plates are still loaded up from last night's bench because I was in a rush to get over to the commercial gym for accessories. But after that bench, shoulders definitely are feeling a little bit sticky. And when we're squatting, we need to be getting into shoulder external rotation. But when we're benching, we need to be able to access shoulder IR in order to touch the bar to our chest. Obviously, we don't want to be dumping like that. That's an exaggeration of the position. But that internal is so important for getting down to the bottom and feeling solid in the bottom of the bench. So to address that, I'm going to stick my arm through a band, make sure the band is around my elbow, and place the back of my hand on my low back. I'm gonna step back until there's a decent amount of band tension. And then I'm gonna set my shoulder blade back, do my best to keep it there, and then let my band pull the elbow forward. So I'm going into internal rotation. I'm pulling back an external rotation. And this is gonna lengthen those external rotators and strengthen them at the same time. I'm gonna run sets. I'm gonna run reps until I feel like I'm getting a little bit of fatigue, feeling like I'm getting a little bit of work in, and I feel like that range is kind of opening up. Then I'm gonna shake her out, switch arms, do another set or two until things feel nice and lubed up. And you'll notice while I'm keeping my shoulder blade pinned back, the amount of range of motion I have at the elbow is very small. If I let the shoulder blade go, I can get way forward. But again, if we're letting the shoulder blade go, we're not putting the range of motion into the shoulder socket. We're just moving the shoulder blade, which is not what we're trying to target with these right here. And those of you familiar with the vlog will be familiar with this push-up setup. And what you'll notice is that when I'm training these on Tuesday, the band is way lower because I'm trying to get more of a strength stimulus out of them on Tuesdays, along with the range of motion and along with the scap control. But when I'm doing these as prep work, the only thing I have in mind is going to be range of motion access and is going to be the shoulder blade control. So I'm making it a lot higher. So the relative load is a lot lower. So I'm not gonna really getting any fatigue from these. I'm just forcing myself to control it. I'm just forcing myself to access that range so I can work to decent sensitize that range, which is especially important the night after a big bench when you are coming back from a pec tear. So all I'm doing with these is I got the relatively heavy band set up pretty darn high, got myself in approximately my bench grip. I'm going to protract hard at the top. I'm going to flex my lats to try to pull my scaps into depression. And then I'm going to lower myself, gradually let that protraction go while keeping my lats on until I get down to the band. First rep after a big bench day always feels a little bit nasty. I'm gonna kind of push into the band to get a bit more stretch. And then I'm gonna push myself up 
all the way through into protraction, keeping the scaps in depression as I do it. And I'm just gonna bang out reps here and I'm gonna go until I get a little bit of fatigue or until I feel things really start to feel nice and lubed up and juicy. Because again, if a range of motion is sensitive, if you can allow yourself to access it repeatedly in a way that you can perceive as safe, that is one of the best ways to desensitize that range. And you guys will know, if you've been following the vlog, my left shoulder was giving me trouble for a couple weeks. I brought these back in, started hammering them out on a daily basis, and that is what got the shoulder to feel way freaking better for me. So if you guys have shoulder problems on bench, just running some push-ups. Even if it isn't this variation with the band, you can do this on a kitchen counter, you can do this in a doorway. Just getting some range of motion access where you are controlling the shoulder blades down, keeping the lats on, then pushing through up to protraction is going to do you freaking wonders. And vlog watchers, this is gonna be another movement that you've seen me actually train on my max effort squat days. But unlike those push-ups on the band, the reason I'm doing these is gonna be a little bit different. And this here is to simply build connection to my low traps and give them a reason to contract so that when I come back to benching, they're gonna be a little bit more familiar with contracting. And the goal here on these scap focused Y raises is really just to let myself round over the top of the incline bench try to roll my scaps down, get into a little bit of an arch, and then let go. I'm not doing these for delts at all, I'm just doing these to try to get a big low trap contraction and be able to better set my upper back when it comes time to benching because this is something that has been really, really, really difficult to get back since the pec surgery and giving it some more focused attention has made a very big difference for me. And what you'll notice is this position that I'm stopping in right before my delts kick in and the delts have to start doing work, it looks a hell of a lot like the start position of where I'll be before I unrack the bench bar. And this is gonna help me practice pulling into that arch and getting the scaps set in depression before I unrack my bench so that I can have an easier time keeping them there through my entire bench setup. So this is something new to my prep work as of today. But last night when I was doing the rolling dumbbell extensions, I noticed a decent chunk of sensitivity on the roll back. So I'm just grabbing a pair of 10 pound dumbbells. So super light compared to the hundreds I was using last night, but I'm gonna have the same idea, except I'm really gonna try to keep my elbows as straight up and down as I can at the bottom, really push back into a stretch. And it feels a little bit nasty there. So I know that I'm on the right track with these. And again, the goal here is just to get reps pushing into that area of sensitivity, because if I can push into it in a manner that I know is safe, and I can get that sensation to dissipate throughout the course of the set, the next time I actually use it, it's going to feel so much better, especially if I run these a few more times over the next week. I'm sure that'll be able to tell you guys how much less terrible the rolling extensions felt in the bottom. And like, I wasn't talking about it in the video last night because I really didn't want to admit it to myself at the time, but those did not feel nice. And how much better this feels already has me very, very, very excited to run them the next time. And something else I'm thinking about right now when I'm doing them is in the bottom, I'm trying to protract hard and get my elbows as close to the roof as possible. And really what that's doing is just letting me push further into that Terry's stretch and really just make it feel nasty in a nice and controlled manner. And I mean, at this point, I am hardly feeling any grossness. So that tells me that the set is probably done. All right, guys, that is some Saturday night shoulder prep for you. These movements might not be the best thing for you to do, but a general guideline would be to check up on both ends of shoulder socket rotation, and then just move into some positions and move into some things that you know are sensitive so we can work towards accessing that range, desensitizing that range, and gaining control over that range. So the next time that you use it, you are more prepared to do it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Appreciate the heck out of you, especially the ones who click that like button and subscribe button. It does mean a lot as we are continuing to grow this YouTube channel. So once again, thank you and have a good rest of your night.